Let's talk about the spiritual squatters, guys. You know, I've done a video, I did a video not too long ago, and these are a few of the topics I touched on. And so I'm just going to expound a little bit here. Spiritual squatters. You know, there's people that will go and live in someone's house and they know squatters' rights. Squatters right. I want to know what squatter came up with that law <laughs> that's make, made it where out of the goodness of your heart, you let someone in your house, they come live with you. And then because it's been in your house over so many days and they left a shirt in your house so many days, you open up your heart to them. They now know this right that they just need to get in your house. And once they're in your house, they can be causing all types of problems in your household, messing up your house, doing all these things, and they can make you a prisoner in your own home where it's all about their rights and how you can't put them out and how you can't do this to them and you can't do that to them. And they know all their rights. They're not doing the right things. They're not cleaning up. They want to bring people in your house. They want to do different things. They keep your kitchen dirty. They're not following the rules. They have a pet. All these things happen, guys. I heard about people that knows how to play this this game with with uh when they go to stay in different places so they know they they can go and sign a lease and then they don't pay their rent and then they go through this whole game where they can actually stay at this place rent free while all the court proceedings and all the preparation and the legal battle is going on but they can live rent free and then all they need to do is just stay there for so long and get out but they know all their rights the entire time and that's how people are. That's how people are with the Lord. They know their rights. They know that God is supposed to be a God of love. And God is supposed to be a God of mercy. And God is supposed to be a God of grace. But when it comes to living holy, following his precepts, they kind of slacken on that. God, you're supposed to let me into heaven. God, you, you sent your son to die on the cross for me. And so if he died for me, I should be able to sin against you and get into heaven anyway. Because you, you the one that sent your son to die. I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> I mean, you might as well say that. <laughs> Squatters. Everybody got something to say to God. Cursing God. When's the last time you heard somebody cursing the devil? When the last time you heard somebody blaming the devil for some stuff? You think the devil just some little mousy character sitting around? Just, oh, I don't know. Uh-uh. But no one ever really, not no one, but met lots of people, even people that's not saved. They have this mindset, and so do saved folks, some of them. They don't try to figure out what's the purpose because truly there's not enough uh, reverence for God. The, that recognition is not there. And I've been there too in my life. It's just, I didn't really, I recognize who God was because for some reason it seemed very far and very distant and that he's just not thinking about me. I never thought of God in a personal way ever. So when things were happening in my life, I was just God, why are you letting this happen? And so somewhere in my head, it was like, you know what? You're not the one God likes. And so there's this thing in my mind of what would be the perfect child of God. Obviously, it's not me. So I belong to the dark side. And that's just how it was rolling. So guys, when we don't have that, that light is not on in us. And really, this is darkness. If a room is pitch black and it's completely dark, you're going to stumble. And so that's what it is. People will look up and blame God for everything, not knowing that everything that happens in their life is number one, the choice of the other person that did the harm or did the wrong. Number two, everything serves a purpose, but we're so busy being mad at God and being angry at him and running away from him and blaming him that we never figure out our purpose. So you have people that will charge God foolishly. They're saying all types of things, but at the same time, Lord, help me to get this job, a squatter. Cursing God one minute, Lord, please let me get a good doctor's report. Lord, please let me pass this drug test. Lord, please just let me live. Lord, please don't let me get a ticket. Lord, please don't let me go to jail. Do you know how many, you know, just offhanded prayers there are out there? But guys, there's so many spiritual squatters. Everybody know what God is supposed to do and what their right, quote unquote, rights are. 
And then they're iffy on their role and, and their responsibilities to the Almighty God. In a lot of ways, the roles have just changed. There is a sense of entitlement in the heart of mankind. Like, God, you supposed to. Right? And people can curse God so easily out of their mouth. And not in their mind do they think God can stop my heart right now. God can cause me to get to have a stroke right now. They don't think that because God is the God of love. I should cuss you out and you supposed to still give me love, Lord. Hurry up. You see what I'm saying? Guys, it's a very dangerous thing. Have you ever wondered why God is so slow to anger? Why we get so much grace and mercy and forgiveness, guys? Because hell is a terrible place. It's a horrible place. And the wrath of God is nothing we could ever imagine. If God took his hedge off of us and allowed the powers of darkness, you may think you have darkness in your life. If the Lord just removed his presence from you completely, it's a whole nother level of torment. It's a whole new level of just... Your mind just shot. My brothers and sisters in the Lord. Spiritual squatters is what many people are. And it's not just unsafe people. Okay, they're blind. But what about people that's claiming to see? To know the Lord. But they know their rights. Their aim is to always know their rights. They will go into the Bible to find their rights to support their lifestyles and their decisions. But they don't go in the word of God to know what God wants for them. They don't want to study that. But, oh, they'll go flip scriptures about shacking. Oh, there's no scriptures about shacking. So shacking can't be wrong. Oh, the Lord didn't talk about smoking. The Lord didn't talk about fornication. The Lord didn't talk about pornography. Okay, well, you go on ahead and pornography yourself all the way until your last breath. If you think it's okay, if we want to play stupid, because that's what it is. You're playing stupid. People play dumb. Oh, God doesn't mention smoking. Okay. Come on. Come on. The driver's manual doesn't say that I can't drive the car into a restaurant either. There's an expectation. That you know that this is not correct. But you have people that just does not have that. They just don't have that uh, in them. It's just, it's just been just melted off. Spiritual squatters. Let's not be that. Let's not be that. And don't waste your time arguing with them. If you've given them the word one time. And they still want to. About it, cool. All right, shake the dust off your feet because too many people are getting involved in trying to convince people that know the truth already. They have a pretty good idea that this ain't right, but they thrive on arguments and red pen sessions. I have no time for it. Don't make any time for that. You speak the word of God in love, they don't want to hear it. I am out. Because guess what? There's someone who's ready. Let us not be found trying to get what we can get out of God while we try to toe the line or skirt his teachings and his principles and how we can be better, how we can become more and more like him. Let's not think about all we can get from God while we continue to quench and ignore and override the voice of the Holy Spirit. Don't be a spirit. Do not be a spiritual squatter, guys. All right.